how much time do you, you the Vion viewers, spend browsing social media sites every day? Are you one of those obsessed about checking updates on Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, Instagram and the like? Well, experts have warned that too much time on the phone may be bad for your mental and physical health. Now governments and businesses are recognizing the threat that social media sites cause to employee productivity. In India, a proposal by the Department of Telecom to regulate over-the-top services such as Skype, Viber, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram or Facebook had met with stiff resistance a few years ago. It was said that the proposal impinged on the freedom of expression of the users and was not in keeping with the times we live in. Well, now a similar debate has kicked off in Uganda in Africa after the government there began imposing a tax on the use of social media use. Starting this month, you can't use over-the-top services in Uganda unless the new social media use tax of 200 Ugandan shillings per day is paid. The Ugandan government believes that such a tax is necessary to control the activities of its young population and curb gossip. President Yoveri Museveni says that idle talk on social media is causing economic loss for the country. Now, though the new rules have started a big debate, it impacts only a minuscule percentage of Uganda's population. Barely 22% of Ugandans use internet services. Reports say that uh, tech-savvy youngsters have already begun work on ways to skirt the new tax. All right, joining me live is a blogger, media and communications specialist from Kampala in Uganda. Rosebill, thank you so much for making time to speak to us on Beyond. Now, give us the reaction that this caused in Uganda where you are. What's been the popular reaction among youths, for instance? I think that this tax has to be understood within the wider uh, ranges within the uh, government trying to control young people expressing themselves. Uganda is the second youngest nation in the world. Our average age in Uganda is 19 years old. So when you have a lot of young people online expressing themselves for the first time in many years, like the government has never been used to this kind of expression. It's, it's really the spirit of the tax is to curtail freedom of expression and an online freedom of expression in particular but uh, along the way we see the restrictions to access to information because young people exchange information this is not just for entertainment a lot of education material a lot of information that young people share through all these services is going to be curtailed Rosebell, correct me if i'm wrong but the excise duty amendment oh. bill which was passed recently by the country's parliament Le, uh, you know, puts a 1% levy on total value of mobile money transactions. Now, the government says we mm. need this money to give free education, free health care to the people across the country. Is that something which the people in Uganda are buying into? No, I mean, you have to realize we have a president who has been in power for 32 years and the regime in Kampala is highly corrupt. It has not delivered much in terms of education and health. We are struggling with the health bills. In fact, thousands of Ugandans trek every year to India for health to access health care that's how bad it is and and we don't trust that even this this tax uh, on top of the very many other taxes we pay would be used to uh, to give us any service from this kind of regime and, and rosewell very quickly uh, now that this tax is become a reality how do the civil society members intend to take this or take their campaign forward in terms of agitation a movement or, or protest maybe but have they reconciled themselves to paying this tax going forward? First of all, you have to realize in Uganda, only 18% of the people live in the, in the urban areas and use internet consistently. And we have seen people moving to go to the courts to really bring down this, uh, this kind of tax and the fact that the parliament did not consult. This is a in, in a that there was no consultation and, and we're seeing of course uh, young people online using virtual private networks to sub, uh, circumvent all these uh, uh, all these taxes and and the lack of connectivity so indeed the few there have been fewer people online but those who are online are using uh, virtual private networks which we are told that the government would like also to block from now on because they 
think that everybody should be paying this tax. But the, when you look at in reality, we have very young population, very high unemployment, youth unemployment rate. So the, there's no way you can add this kind of tax to young people who hardly have any jobs. Indeed, on that note, Roosevelt, thank you so much for joining us live from Kampala, Uganda.